So what do you do when you fall off track with your diet? And how do you get back on track effectively so you can continue making progress instead of letting this one slip up turn into some kind of massive slip up where you lose weeks or even months of progress? And I specifically use the word when because it is only a matter of time. We're all human, nobody here is perfect. Despite our best effort, there are gonna be slip ups. There are gonna be times when we're gonna be dealing with stressful situations where we will not be able to be consistent. And there's a lot of things that will happen on this journey that you can't can't even predict and those things will throw you off guard. So it is normal to fall off track, but it is also important to be able to learn from these experiences. And I know in my journey, I've dealt with my fair share of adversity like this because one weekend can easily turn into a whole week of bad behavior where you lose the whole week of progress, sometimes even much longer. So the last thing I want you to do is actually take one or two of these slip ups and turn them into some kind of massive failure where you lose months of progress. And I want to help you in this video by sharing my experience and I'm going to actually give you a three step process that you can implement right now if you've been falling off track with your diet to bounce back quick and learn from the experience and improve your consistency. The first step and the most important step you need to take is to forgive yourself. This is actually the hardest step of the three because this step requires you to stop beating yourself up, which is actually the easy thing to do. The easy thing to do is to be critical toward yourself, to live in that negative self-talk, to find the reasons for why it's all your fault and to continue living in that space. The hard thing to do is to actually embrace the fact that you're not perfect, that you've made a mistake, and that you can forgive yourself. Self-empathy is hard, especially if you're a hard performer. If you're someone who is an entrepreneur, a busy professional, you're used to being successful in life, you actually end up beating yourself up quite a lot. If you're a perfectionist like me, this is actually a really, really hard thing to do. So you have to forgive yourself so you're in the right mental space now to move on to step two, which is to analyze the situation. And this is actually the most important step when it comes to figuring out how to avoid this in the future. Because in the future, what you wanna do is you wanna have a game plan for or handling the same exact situation. So you have to analyze what was the cause of the slip up? Was it a social event that you weren't ready for? Was it simply a lack of planning? Was it something completely new that you've never dealt with before? You have to figure out the cause so then you can iterate on your process. By iterating on your process, you have an algorithm and a process so when this happens again, when this same situation occurs, you're not gonna repeat the same mistake. You're gonna have a step-by-step -step solution if this ever occurs again. This is a very, very important part of it to really understand yourself and what led you to fall off track. And instead of just ignoring it, which a lot of people advocate out there, I don't know why, but. I'm a big, big believer in understanding the process, understanding your mind, how you ended up in that situation. What was the weak moment? How much stress was there? Was it business related? Was it family related relationships? What was it that really caused you to break? Once you know this, then you can only move on to step three, which is getting back on track immediately and getting back to the original plan. And it's important to go back to the original plan here with the lessons from step two, instead of some kind of overly restrictive plan, which is again, a natural tendency of ours to start overly restricting and starting to be very, very, very restrained, which then leads to another slip up eventually. Because if you go and do some kind of crazy fast or some kind of ridiculously crazy training regime because you had a little slip up, you're eventually going to break and end up again off track, which will cause even bigger issues. So it's important to go back to the original plan that's moderately restricted, that allows some flexibility, that makes sense long term. Don't fold for the emotional decision. Think rationally and objectively as you possibly can. This is actually a very difficult thing to do because we're so close to the problem. This is where coaching and mentoring can help to get that external feedback, to actually someone analyze your situation instead of you making decisions around it. Because when you make decisions, you have to be as objective as possible. Getting back to the original plan is the right decision to do. And if you go with something overly restrictive, again, you're setting yourself up for failure. Now, an important thing to know why getting back on track is so effective and getting back on track immediately is because you're now in immediately investing energy back in building up those good habits. Because one of the reasons why you probably fell off track is your old bad habits that you've invested energy in for five, 10, 15 years. And those habits don't just go away because you decided to get leaner. They're not gonna disappear overnight. They're still there, they're alive. You fed them for a long period of time. Now, the good habits, 
they need energy and time and practice to form. So when you get back on track immediately, you're continuously investing good energy in those habits that are new, that are better, that are healthier, and eventually the scale will tip so the new habits will be a lot stronger than the old habits. So the slip-ups will be a lot more rare and they're gonna be a lot less impactful because now we have a lot of new habits that will keep you on track. So this is an important thing to understand because a lot of people, they actually give up two feet from goal. They give up right before they're about to make those good habits so strong that they keep them on track. So there's a little bit of a balancing act there. You have to invest enough time and energy and practice in those new habits to actually be strong enough. And persistence really is the key here. The only way to fail on this journey ultimately is to give up, is to stop investing the effort. So you have to keep investing that effort into those new habits that will keep things going and understanding that you don't have to be perfect to reach the result that you wanna reach. You just have to be very, very consistent and improving your process over and over and over again. And that's just the nature of failure. The failure is just simply a source of feedback where you can keep improving your process. That's how you want to think about it. It's not some kind of grandiose thing that defines you as a person. It's just feedback for you to build a better system, build a better program moving forward. And that's if you view it like this, you will be able to be very, very consistent. You're going to absolutely crush it in this journey. Now, the other thing, if you love this video, make sure to hit like below because it would mean a lot to me. It does help a lot with the algorithm. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like more videos like these that we go deep into the psychology and how to get on track with this. I'm gonna leave a video here at the end that's gonna help you on your journey as well. So check out that video. And if you wanna work with me as a coach and as a mentor, there's a link in the description where you can find more details about that. And I will see you in that next video.